after hours of preparation and lots of tutorial videos, today we are recording our client onboarding videos. Hey everyone, today meeting up with my business partner to finally put together our client onboarding videos. This is something I've talked about in a couple of the last vlogs. So we've booked a conference room here and we're just going to get started making that video. And as boring as it may sound, this is actually something I've been working on for almost a month and a half now, just trying to figure out what kind of things we need to say in a client onboarding video in order to make sure that people feel like they're going to be taken care of, they have a place where they can get all their questions answered, and most importantly, cut down on all those emails. Unfortunately, speaking of emails, I had a couple that threw us for a loop, so I actually didn't get to record the video I wanted to work on. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. But it does kind of give some more content and something that I just learned. Or I should say relearned, and that is the importance of balancing your future optimization with the now. So something that we went over during our meeting earlier today was that a client, a new client was coming on, one that we, I talked about getting in the last vlog. And then we also had a client that wanted a call because his ads aren't, aren't working as well as they, they should be. And so there's always this balance between trying to be forward thinking and solving problems that you know you're going to have in the future and then putting out current fires now. And so sometimes it's more important to put out the current fires versus what's going to be making things easier in the future. In this particular instance, it was making sure that we got on the phone with the client and we answered the new client's questions instead of taking the time to make the onboarding video that <laughs> oddly enough in the future would prevent the client call that we had to have and all of the emails we had to answer. The videos that we wanna record would essentially answer all these questions, but the video's not out yet and we don't wanna make current people wait until we have the video done. And so it's just one of those things as an entrepreneur, especially if you're doing any sort of services where you're always looking for a balance between making sure you're servicing the clients you have now and answering their questions, keeping them happy, but also making enough time where you're putting together a system or, source or investing in processes so that it's easier on you in the future. And when it comes to investing in processes, I think there's two places you can start. Either you start trying to delegate and systematize the first part from front to back or back to front, and it just depends upon which makes the most sense. So for example, with content, I've systemized back to front. So instead of trying to systematize the process that you've already seen that I go through for figuring out what the content video should be, I work on systematizing the process of all of the posting and then all of the editing, all the SEO writing. And I kind of work my way all the way up into the actual recording part that I can't necessarily delegate. But when it comes to client services or the product side of the four digital business quadrants, I look at systematizing front to back because I really believe that figuring out how you can kind of structure the relationship in the beginning with a client really sets the tone. So for example, what we finished working on today was the welcome email. That might sound super simple, but guess what? Up until, I don't know, four months ago, we, I would just type, I would literally type up a new email or I'd go through my inbox and find a previous email that I'd sent and then I'd kind of redo that email a little quickly and then send it off to clients. Where now we have a template of here are the three things that we need you to do in order to get started with us. And it really helps set the tone. I've had clients where we kind of ad hoc try and do things and then we've had, I've had clients where we already had a process in place and every time we had a process in place, even if I was building the process before I sent them the email, 
the relationship was always a lot smoother and it gives you a lot more just clout and authority, right? Because it looks like you know what you're doing, even if you don't. So there have been some times, for example, where I would be working with a client on a Google Ads account when we used to do that a lot before I started the whole YouTube ads thing. And all of a sudden I'd realize I don't have a tutorial on how to show somebody how to do this, like give me access to this account or, or set up Google Tag Manager correctly. So instead of replying and being super personal, which is, would make sense because you have a client, a little counterintuitive, instead what I would do is I would record a video as if it was for a bunch of clients, right? And this is part, this is the probably the one area in your services where you, you're not necessarily faking it, right? You're not pretending like, hey, client number 100, but at the same time, you're not pretending, you are pretending like you're gonna be sending this to multiple people because you are. And so what I would do is I would record the video or I'd write the email or the, the guide as if it was for more than one person. And then that way I could use it over and over and over again. And so one of the things, just an actionable takeaway with your onboarding email is you definitely want to make it really clear what they're getting, what you need from them to get started, and when you're going and when they can expect to hear from you next. So something that we're actually working on is getting a calendar application set up so people can just book their time on the calendar instead of the back and forth email. I, I know Calendly is a really, um, what you call it, popular one, <laughs> blanking there, is a really popular one, but personally, we don't like using it because it just does not integrate with Google Tag Manager at all. So we're very data-driven, we always want things to be tracked at every single level. And so we'll we'll keep looking for a better calendar application so that it's very easy for clients to schedule time when they first onboard. So if you're do you're not doing client services and you're just setting up a digital course or digital product, then you definitely want to customize that email that goes out to them. Thank them for the purchase. Let them know that they made a good decision and give your support information right inside that email. Don't just have a generic email go out with their username and password. It's crazy how many membership sites I've signed up for that just use the generic ones and people don't really, it's kind of like you did all this work to get them and now all of a sudden you're just half-assing it when you're sending your, your welcome email. So definitely, whether you're doing services or you're, you're doing digital products, pay attention to that welcome email. And as I say this, I should probably go fix our course welcome emails, but that's, that's later on on the list. And before I go, I just wanted to give you a quick update on vlogging with this GoPro. I am pretty much fed up with it. So is, and we've had so many problems with the audio on the video files. I'm actually going to be going and picking up the new Sony camera that just came out, you can see it behind me, and it's just about the same size as this GoPro. So I'll be experimenting with that. Not happy about dropping another $800 on a camera, but hopefully that will kind of improve the quality. And you probably saw a vlog a couple of vlogs ago where it was a four by three aspect ratio because we had to freaking reset it. And I didn't realize that it went back to four by three instead of 16 by nine. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I sincerely hope you got some value out of this video. I know it was a little dry because today was, today was a boring day. It was a boring day. It was just a meeting, talked with a, a client or two, and then just back here at the desk. So until the next video, you know what to do. Keep building the business you love.